All right, in this video, we're gonna look at a collection, a uh, fancy S, that's my best attempt at a cursive S. So some collection of subsets of the plane, R2, such that uh, fancy S is a subspace, a subbasis for some topology on the plane, but fancy S is not an actual basis for any topology on the plane, R2. So let's look at the proof. Uh, I guess we'll call it a proof, even though we're gonna kind of show an example here of such a set S. So what do we mean by subbasis? First of all, there's a couple different definitions depending on what book you're, you're looking at. So the one I'm thinking of here is by subbasis, we mean that uh, just the fancy S covers R2. And what do we mean by covers here? We mean that the union of elements in S, so in other words, if I took the union of all these subsets that live in S, then you ought to cover R2, you ought to get R2 back. So the union of all of them gives you R2. So that's what we're gonna, again, take as our definition of a subbasis. So the first thing we need to do is, well, what's a good candidate for what S is? And maybe there's lots of examples of, of an S that'll solve this problem. So what we're gonna do first of all is fix some notation. So let's let uh, parentheses A comma B, let's let that just be a typical open interval on the real line. So just like from college algebra. So now let's look at our subbasis. So fancy S, part of it's gonna be the following. I'm gonna look at A, B, think of these as your X values. So X is allowed to go from A to B. And then this is the Cartesian product in the middle here. Think of these as your y values. I'm saying your y value can be whatever real number you want. And so again, where a and b are just some real numbers, maybe I ought to be careful and say that a is less than b here. So this is going to be part of my uh, subbasis here. And so just to give me an idea, what are those? I'm saying I've got kind of these infinite vertical strips. So that's how you should think of a, a typical element of S so far. What else I'm gonna do, I'm gonna union with, I'm gonna throw some more stuff into S here. The other things I'm gonna throw is, now I'm gonna let my X values go from minus infinity to infinity. Again, Cartesian product here. And I'm gonna think about my Y values as going from say A to B, where A and B are any real numbers, where again, A is less than B. And so think of that as, again, infinite strips one more time, but in this case, in the horizontal direction. So again, uh, in the horizontal direction, that's how you can see that's how the X values, again, get to go as far to the left and to the right as you like. So S, again, S altogether is the union of all such infinite strips, all such infinite horizontal strips and all such infinite vertical strips. So to see that this S is a subbasis for some topology on the plane, what we need to do again is show that R2 is actually equal to the union of all such strips, which is kind of, I don't know, maybe that's intuitive, right? Like if I had the whole plane, it's definitely covered by a bunch of strips that look like this. And so how do you do that? Uh, maybe by definition here. Well, it's just kind of a, a typical subset proof. So let's let X comma Y be a point in R2. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a set in here that contains X comma Y. And uh, there's lots of ways to do that. The way that I thought about doing it was, why don't I just take B to be the following set? Let's go from X minus one to uh, X plus one. So that uh, X is definitely in this interval here. And then uh, Y, that real number is certainly in the interval minus infinity to infinity. So X comma Y is an element of B. Got a little picture for you. Any point you pick, at any point in the plane that you pick, you could always make some, again, infinite strip. In this case, I just picked a vertical one that contains X comma Y. So there we go. So what do we have? What have we just done? Like for any point X comma Y in R2, we can definitely find one of these strips that contains our point. And so what does that tell us? That tells me that the plane is definitely contained in a union of all such strips. So recall that that means that S is a subspace, uh, I'm sorry, a subbasis for some topology on R2. Now, I don't know what the topology is that S is a subbasis for. I don't know what the topology is that S generates is another way to think about that. But the next part of what this problem asks us to do, fortunately, it doesn't ask us to think about that. Uh, the next thing that it asks us to do, though, is to uh, show that this set that we've constructed, S, is not a basis for any topology on R2. And this, again, is going to uh, hint at why the notion of subbasis versus basis is uh, important in topology. That, uh, it's a little bit harder to be a basis. So again, this S that we've talked about here, all these different vertical and horizontal infinite strips, is not a basis for any topology. And the way that we'll do this is we're gonna find a specific point in the plane, and we're gonna find two specific elements in S, call them B1 and B2, such that, well, my point is in the intersection of B1 and B2, but B1 intersect B2 does not contain anybody else from S. So remember, there's kind of that intersection property that the basis elements have to have. If this was a basis, 
uh, one of the defining features of a basis is again, if you've got a point in the intersection of two basis elements, then there's in fact a smaller basis element that contains the point inside of that intersection. So we're going to show that S fails that important property of a basis. So let's take the origin to be our special point x comma y. Remember I said we're going to find a specific point, so the origin sounds cool. Let's do that. And uh, so what else do I need to do? I need to choose uh, two specific sets that are, again, in S. So that means two specific infinite strips. And uh, the ones I'm going to choose, I'll have the plane for you here. First one I'm going to choose is from uh, B1. It goes from minus 1 to 1 on the x-axis, and then uh, y can be anything you like. So that's what I've colored for you down there. And B2 is going to be similar. Let's let x be anything we like, and y go from minus 1 to 1. And so those are definitely two elements of S, again, two infinite strips here. But think about the intersection of those two things. So the intersection would just be minus 1 to 1 cross minus 1 to 1. And in that picture, that's this little unit square that's in here. And so there is a picture of the intersection. It definitely contains the origin. The origin's smack dab in the middle. But uh, let's take a look at what happens there. It's pretty clear that the elements of S, they're all strips, right? And I've been calling them strips this whole video. But all those strips that I have in S have infinite area. What about the intersection of B1 and B2? Well, B1 intersect B2, it's got area 4. And so B1 intersect B2 is well, not a strip of infinite area, so it's not an element of S. So the intersection B1 uh, intersect B2 is definitely not an S. And moreover, what you could say, right, is that uh, because B1 intersect B2 does not have an infinite area, what I should write here is that it's not possible for B1 intersect B2 to contain an element of S because all the elements of S are strips of infinite area. So I can't stuff an infinite area strip into a strip of area four, right? That's the impossibility here. So that's what I mean by uh, we're showing that B1 intersect B2 doesn't contain any element of S. And so by that logic, again, uh, we've done it. So what you conclude at the end of this now is, you know, we've shown that this set S, it fails that important basis property where, uh, again, the intersection of two, uh, quote, quote unquote, basis elements should contain a smaller basis element. We've shown that that fails here. So again, conclude that this S is not a basis for any topology on the plane.